Welcome back to Blockchain Pill. My name is Alex and today we'll talk with Isaac Valadez about ICP Community Conference 2024. We're getting closer to May 10th, which is the date when the onboarding event is going to happen. And in this video, Isaac will tell us more about their upcoming SNS launch. They're planning to decentralize ICPCC via the SNS DAO. The community will own it and the community will decide where and how those community conferences will happen. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Welcome to the podcast. It's been, I believe, one month. We're getting super close to ICPCC 2024. So I'm happy to have you back here on the podcast and to learn more about what you guys have in store for this event. Awesome. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us again. And yeah, time's been flying. It's coming quick. We've seen a lot of influencers taking part and getting into the event. A lot of projects also are taking part. For the people that are new to ICPCC or have not heard about it, and this is the first time they're hearing about it, can you give us a brief overview about the event that's coming up on May 10th? Yeah, exactly. So on May 10th, it's a, um, a kind of a, a global event to showcase ICP to the wider Web3 industry. So we're basically going to be showing off um, different videos of, of projects of what's possible to build on ICP. We're going to be explaining uh, the, the basics of what ICP is. And I think it's an opportune time because really ICP's community needs um, onboarding, uh, making the, the, the information of what's so bullish and exciting about this technology accessible and easy for others to understand. And, uh, and really just coming around and celebrating because we have a lot to celebrate right now as, as a community. So um, the structure of the event will basically be a large nine hour live stream that starts off in European time zones kind of in the evening and ends in the US. Um, the first 30 minutes and the last 30 minutes will be um, what we're calling prime times, where basically um, meetup watch parties that are in person in, in cities all over the world will come together and they watch the kickoff and then they watch the conclusion. Um, and we will also have one in Asia Pacific that will be uh, like a pre-party um, with our partner Yuku that will be live streamed out of their metaverse. So basically anywhere on earth, there's uh, there's a there's a time that works that's like after work when you can go to a meetup, uh, meet great Web3 people and, and watch information that, that explains what ICP is in an accessible way and, and gets you bullish on it. So it's kind of like for those in the community, uh, it's something you can invite your friend to. And, and these will be all you know free events. And um, and even if you, there's not one near you, uh, you can watch the live stream, of course, over YouTube or any other channel. I love both the online part of the onboarding event that's going to be happening online, but I also love the fact that it's going to have a lot of hubs around the world and people can go to those hubs and take part there. And I saw a lot of well-known people in the ICP community that are hosting those events. Do you have like close by a list of where those events are going to happen? Well, there's, there's well over 20, so I don't have them all memorized, but there's all different kinds of brands hosting them. There's also individual um, ICP community community members hosting them. Um, Cone State is hosting a few. Um, the main uh, live stream location where the MCs will be, our MCs will be the swap. Um, and that will be in a studio in Milwaukee, um, like professional like like studio for like like TV shows and news channels and stuff where we're going to have three cameramen, a, a producer and everything. Um, in their studio, and it's going to be the same area that that meetup is happening in Milwaukee. So there'll be like a live audience. So that's going to be a lot of fun, and that's one of the bigger ones. Um, but we also have them happening in, in Berlin, um, and and uh, I'm going to be hosting one in Austin. Um, and gosh, just it's you know there's 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 well over 20, uh, 25, I think that there's there's about twenty on the website right now. It's it's loom, l u dot m a slash i c p c c. Um, and that's kind of our Luma page. We can find the ones uh, near you, but there's quite a lot of brands involved. We'll have the location on screen for people to find the nearest one to them. There is even one in Romania here in uh, Cluj, which is a, a very nice city in, in Romania. And I want to give a shout out to The Swap for hosting like the professional one. And where is it again? Uh, Milwaukee. Shout out to The Swap for that. And he's going to be the MC of ICPCC 2024. Yes, he is. And, and it's, uh, we're really excited to have them. They're quite a professional team and they bring a lot to the table. So it's, it's awesome to have their partnership in this. Tell us more about, because we've seen a lot of projects and influencers get involved into ICPCC 2024. Can you give us, you know, some of the projects and creators that are involved in this event? Yeah, well, there's well over 50 plus different ICP projects involved. So most of them are going to be the ones you've heard about. Everything from... Um, uh, you, you know, there's there's local mining, Bitfinity, 
Uh, Dmail, Dmail's done huge and they're really coming back into the ecosystem strong. And so they're, they're going to have a strong presence there. Um, and so there's a lot of the bigger names. And then there's, there's some that I'm even discovering as as we work with them. And and, and uh, like there's a few projects I didn't even know about that um, that are going to be able to we're going to be able to highlight. Um, and they're going to be showcased in various different ways. So some of them will have talks on different ICP topics. A lot of them will have um, like little one minute uh, promo videos that just kind of like explain what they do in a really cool way that shows visuals of like how their DAP looks because we really want to show off what ICP can do. Um, and then another way is a lot of them are doing airdrops. So all throughout the live stream, these uh, airdrop codes will be given out and there'll be an, uh, a dashboard. I think it's called Galactic Airdrops or something. I think it's Seb, Seb's handling and he posted it recently. And um, basically you put the code that you see on the screen into the dashboard and, and you get some tokens. Um, so there's going to be all kinds of tokens from all across the ecosystem that are going to be uh, participating in that. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. And then uh, in terms of, of content creators, we have like 14 content creators that are actually going to be producing their own content um, for the live stream itself. So they're not just promoting and partnering. They're actually helping to contribute to part of the nine hours of live stream. So we've got like like Bitcoin Renegade, Six Figs. And Six Figs, by the way, he's doing a, a really exciting documentary. So like I think it's called Traction so FTX. Yeah. yeah, so that's really cool, mm -hmm. like a mini documentary. Um, Crypto Darren, Bobby O, um, my, Mike Swartz and, and Bobby are going to be doing an, an, an interview together. Um, William Lorette, uh, we've got Mike from Clown, uh, Victor ICP, um, Blockchain Boy, Aaron Bramster, The Swap, of course, Jerry Bannerfield, uh, Blockchain Pill. And then um, we just found out actually today that when we're recording this, that Wendy O is going to be included as well. So that's going to be fun. And I think a few more are going to be added. I really love the fact that you guys are going with the theme of decentralization. So also like with the fact that, you know, you have different uh, content creators, you know, to participate into uh, this onboarding event, as well as having the uh, live meetups happening around the world that are managed by individuals. But you also made an announcement last week that you guys are preparing to decentralize the ICPCC via the SNS. So for the people that are new to the ICP ecosystem, what does decentralizing via the SNS mean? Yeah, so it means that basically like, like built into the protocol of ICP itself, there is a launch pad and uh, we're going to be using that to, to be a, a truly uh, decentralized DAO from day one, where a DAO is kind of handling the sale itself and then the, the token is created and airdropped to the people who participated in the swap sale. And um, and then, you know, the front end governance and all, all of that is entirely on chain. So it's a it's a really awesome, unique to ICP um, way of having a DAO formed. I think one of the coolest parts, too, is that the DAO is able to take over ownership and control um, of applications. And so we have updatable dApps and, and a DAO can directly control the source code of that. Um, but in this case, we're building the first um, DAO where it's just the treasury and uh, and really the, the application is 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 a uh, um, off chain. You know, it's it's a, an event series, right? So the the DAO will fund the events and have all of that part be on chain. But but it's not one specific DAP that that is launching uh, with the SNS. So that's called an off chain DAO. It kind of like Constitution DAO was. I mean, a lot of people may have heard of Constitution DAO. They tried to raise money to buy the the, the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution. Uh, very similar to that, and it's the first time it's ever been done on the SNS. Is it the first time that a, an event, like a, a conference, is being decentralized and turned into a DAO? Well, so there are a couple conferences out there that, that do claim to be DAO. So I think one of the most popular is ETH Denver. But if you actually look at the ETH Denver um, like like snapshot where they show their, their proposals, there are zero proposals. There is not really any activity um, because it's more of like, like it's an event series that has a token rather than event series that has governance. Um, and then I think that there's ApeFest and I don't really see proposals about the events for ApeFest. I think it's an independent party that runs it, but technically there is an Ape, uh, ApeCoin DAO or something, I believe. Uh, what mm -hmm. makes this DAO unique is that it will actually directly control the treasury that funds events. Um, and it will also not have a core team. And we can talk a little bit about, about that in a bit, but um, but yeah, this, this is the first time that it's been done in this particular way. And especially, I think the fact that I'm not sure I've ever heard of a DAO that decentralizes itself actively during one of its own events. So it's on May 10th is when the swap sales should be live. And, and the people learning about ICP through this event series can actually like onboard and, uh, you know, take over control of some of the very events that just taught them about, about ICP, which is a little bit meta 
and, and fun. That's super cool. And what I love about DAOs on the Internet Computer Protocol is that they are actual DAOs and the holders of the tokens are actually in control of what happens, as you mentioned, with the with the treasury. Because, you know, outside of the Internet Computer Protocol, and correct me if I'm wrong, there is somebody at the top who, after the votes are cast, you know, they, they need to say, okay, you know, we're, we're going to do it or we're not going to do it. So the funds are going to be in the treasury and the token holders will have absolute control over the funds, which is super cool. And that is only seen on the Internet Computer Protocol. So can we go over the uh, roadmap that you guys have in mind for decentralizing IC ICPCC? Like what's the plan going to look like? Maybe touch the tokenomics as well. Yeah, sure. So the roadmap is pretty short because unlike other SNS launches and DAO launches as a whole, like I said, there's no core team. So once this launches, it's its, its own thing and we're hands off. It's not ours anymore. Um, so our roadmap is just to basically to get to the point of getting it launched. And there's been quite a bit involved and a lot of work that we've done over the last several months to, to get this done. Um, the uh, the first component is that this is going to be a, a legally registered Marshall Islands DAO LLC nonprofit, uh, meaning it's going to have juris jurisdictional clarity from day one. I think this is the first uh, Marshall Islands DAO LLC to launch on the SNS. Um, this means that it can, um, it has legal ability to, to write, uh, to, to like a, uh, uh, agree to contracts to, to agree to make legal agreements um, and own IP and things like that. Um, it also provides liability protection for DAO members. Basically, no one human can be held responsible for what the DAO decides to do. And a DAO doesn't have an owner it is what it is. Membership via tokens and, and governance via smart contracts. Um, so it, it's really neat to have this like new innovation in the legal format married to this new innovation in the DAO format. And that's kind of the first step. And um, and so that filing is in progress right now. It's, it's already been submitted and uh, it should be ready um, by, by like late this month. The next step after that is the transfer of IP. So the brand itself and the, you know, the name and, and, and all the, the branding and assets is going to be transferred to um, uh, a third party who is then going to hold it and then transfer that to the DAO. So like Code and State is literally like giving up ownership completely of everything that represents the event, like in the legal sense on paper and just in a full sense and in reality. So um, and then after that point, uh, once the DAO is in existence, there's going to be a submission for the, we've already been talking to them and I will announce them soon. But um, somebody in the ecosystem who's basically going to be the first council member. Um, they'll make their application to the DAO, and once they become a council member, they're going to submit the, the earliest proposals that the DAO needs to basically fulfill the commitments in the white paper, like adding liquidity and things like that. Um, and then at that point, other council members will be elected by the DAO itself, um, and um, they'll meet once a, once a month um, to kind of discuss what are the most important decisions that need to be made and, and the proposals that need to be formed. Uh, and, and then uh, and then they'll submit those proposals to the DAO and there'll also be no neurons for the DAO, meaning that people can automatically follow their votes of whatever their favorite council member is. And uh, and then it's the self-running entity with full legal status past that point that's under no one's control. Which is crazy because I, I've been talking to some other projects that have decentralized via the SNS. I remember they were saying that they have a lot of trouble registering like the company because the legal system in, in their countries would have trouble, you know, understanding what a DAO is and like who owns the DAO and like nobody owns a DAO. So the, this is fixed by uh, going and starting the company in the Marshall Islands, right? Yeah, yeah, this is fixed. And for context, we, we I had to talk to like eight different lawyer teams to find this as the right solution. And this is really like globally the, the world class best defined solution for DAOs. Like it's a specifically legislature for DAOs, right? So what that means is um, the Marshall Islands government, for example, uh, like, like the same good standing, you have to pay $5,000 to maintain the registry of the entity every year on January 1st. So the Marshall Islands government actually accepts crypto payments. And using uh, chain key technology, CK um, USDC, when, when it comes out and everything, it might even be possible for the, our DAO on IC to directly pay its own annual registration bill with the government. Which, how cool would that be? It's um, super cool, yeah. And uh, it's going to have a, uh, a, the DAO has a lawyer. So like like the DAO can, can if they ever got sued, like, like the DAO can enable a lawyer to work on its behalf and it's working on the full DAO's behalf, right? Which is just really neat. Uh, it's got a registered agent that helps with paperwork. Um, it, it's really, even the registration of it is unique because it, it's something called MIDAO, uh, M-I-D-A-O. Um, and it's a public-private partnership where they're like a service provider and a registrar at the same time. So they kind of, 
they help DAOs handle things like the paperwork, and they're also the thing, the the entity that would have the paperwork submitted to it. So they, you basically, when you register it, you have this operating agreement. It'll be made public, so everybody who's going to be a member can read it. And it's just really neat to see a legal document that like specifically mentions the smart contract address, like the, the canister of the um, of the NNS, and and references that as like like what the governance is going to where where all the, the activity is going to be logged for this legal entity. Um, and so uh, yeah, it's it's really it's really a fascinating process that we've gone through, and there'll be more information coming about about it during the conference okay. itself. A lot of the other NNS projects can learn from this, and you know maybe transfer the DAO like to the Marshall Islands. So is it is it's not like the Bahamas Islands where you know FTX or whatever other companies were registered, right? No, and actually we looked into all of the like like the different options like um, British Virgin Islands and Cayman and, and things like that, and um, you know they actually recently passed laws that make it uh, it's it's called the VASP Act. Uh, virtual asset service provider, something like that. I'm not sure, but but long story short, you would require KYC for everybody, and uh, so it, it's it's you know it's gotten harder for DAOs to launch, except for in Marshall Islands, where they're very friendly to this type of uh, entity, and they're specifically trying to innovate in this area. In fact, you know I, I've, been, I've become a big fan of learning more about them. They tried to tokenize their monetary system a while back, but I don't think it worked out. But then they also try they're trying right now to to tokenize some like outlier islands. So you can have transferable NFTs that literally give you legal like rental rights to an island. Like how fun does that sound? <laughs> I'm curious, what are the benefits of decentralizing ICPCC and turning it into a DAO? Like why why is it better as a DAO? Well, it, first off, it's it's a, a truly community owned community conference, and I think you can also think of it as as a way to have that like 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 marketing for the ecosystem in a self sustaining way, right? So every dollar that this DAO spends. Um, broadly promotes ICP itself and the whole entire ecosystem and benefits everybody. Um, yet it will the DAO will also be receiving all of the ticket sales and sponsorship requests. So it has a way to provide benefits to the holders um, to compensate them for their governance activity, um, but but also just to refill its own treasury so it can keep promoting the ecosystem. So it's it's like it's kind of something that we've been needing and wanting within the space for a long time as a way for us to take control. Of, of having the ability to form, you know, proper marketing campaigns for ICP directly uh, funded by and, and managed through the, the community itself in a sustainable and ongoing way. So I think that's really cool. And in terms of the, the actual token, it'll be called, I, I love this, uh, the CONF token, C-O-N-F. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it'll have utility most likely with, um, with being how you buy tickets and possibly even sponsor. And, uh, and, and we're still working out the details. And like I said, you know, ultimately that it's up to the DAO itself. The DAO can in, enhance the utility of it, um, it it's, itself. But, uh, but yeah, there's, I think there's a lot of ways to make this really impactful for um, both those who participate in, in the governance, but those who also just, just love ICP and want to contribute to spreading the word about it. Starting in 2025, the ICPCC DAO will be launching two uh, events per year. Uh, one will be a multi-day conference, uh, in-person conference, like we did last year, and then one will be a global uh, live stream with watch parties, um, and like we're doing this year. So basically, ICP will get like highlighted in two different ways, um, uh, you know, every year from now on, and, and with a really large global event brand that is fully decentralized. It would be awesome if you guys could have like one event in America. And, you know, the other event in Europe, because, you know, there's different crowds and it's a lot harder to get to America if you're in Europe and, and vice versa. So maybe maybe that is for the DAO to decide, you know, where they are going to happen. And maybe why not even go as far as, you know, to Asia and have 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 an event there as well. So that's, that's the beauty of the DAO, because if the people decide, you know, to do something, they can vote whether or not they, they want that to happen. So I, I love that. Can you give me more details about the tokenomics and maybe how, you know, how much ICP you guys are aiming to raise? Yeah. So, I mean, we're still trying to finalize the details and I think we're going to be announcing it fairly soon. Um, but I think that it, it, like the final market cap, uh, if the sale completely maxed out that we're currently um, uh, structuring, it'd be around uh, six million. And uh, we're going to have a pretty low minimum and some really interesting incentives. This whole thing is an experiment, but there's going to be some interesting tokenomic things that we try that ne have never been tried before on an SNS or probably in DAOs ever. Um, just a few f uh, fun little things. Uh, it'd be cool to see how they work out. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, this, this really is its own entity past that point. But I think if it hits the minimum, 
it'll be able to at least do a full year of those two different events it needs to host um, at, at, a, at a, you know, at a, at a, in a really good way. Um, and based off the cost that we know that it, it takes uh, as Code and Stake, because we hosted um, two events at this point. And, um, and if it reaches the maximum, it's going to have like, uh, cost at least three years of runway to fund some really large events. That would be really great for the ecosystem. Can you give us a, an estimate cost for one in-person event, like for a, for a multiple day event? Like, do you have any data about how expensive it is? Well, well, roughly, not not exact numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I mean, we, we track this thing. So like last year, we did a two day conference in Miami uh, with 150 attendees. And um, not counting the labor of like my time and a few of the other team members, it was around one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Cool, that's awesome. Because a lot of people maybe don't know those numbers, and you know they look at the the events happening and wonder like how much that is. But I think with the revenue that is going to generate to the DAO with through sponsorships and through all of that, it should be self sustaining because people love going to those events. What is some of the utility of the token? So you mentioned some revenue share, if I'm not mistaken. Of, of the token holders through governance. And I think it would be cool if you hold like, for example, X amount of tokens, you receive like a VIP pass for the in-person event. I think that would be cool. So can you give us more details about the benefits? You know, this is not a security. So if the SEC is listening, this is not an investment token. <laughs> uh, it is a nonprofit. Um, uh, that said, it is legal for a, um, a, a nonprofit to compensate um, vendors and um, and 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 uh, you know contributors. So if you're actively voting, because because like it's this is already great. The thing about the SNS is you get you gain governance rewards by being active in voting. You don't you don't just gain rewards by staking. So um, basically, it's almost like like if you vote as as a participant in this DAO, you're getting compensated, like you, like for doing a job, just like any other uh, contractor would be getting compensated, right? In terms of other kinds of benefits, I think there's quite a, a fun range of things that could be done. Like, like for I imagine, for example, how cool would it be if another SNS DAO wants to sponsor an event, and as part of their proposal to the ICPCC DAO to become a main sponsor, they include an airdrop for all existing ICPCC um, holders. So you can get airdrops from other SNS DAOs um, as as a as a, an active neuron um, voter. So like that would be a really fun thing um, that might that might happen, right? Like I said, I don't really know exactly what happened, but I think a lot of fun things will happen. I think it is. Um, I, I think we have the capability, for example, to also have the comp token be used to buy a conference merch in person. Um, and so there's a lot of flexibility with, with how the comp token will be used. And I think we're going to suggest in the white paper some specific ways, I think, like ticket sales and, and sponsorships um, as kind of a good baseline. But uh, from that point on, it's really the, up to the DAO to decide how it wants to use its token. As I mentioned, maybe give them like a... I, so if I'm a whale in comp token, I want like VIP treatment. VIP pass, go behind the DJ, you know, at the at the parties during the night, yeah. uh, free drinks. That would be super cool. That you have would to be like cool. show that you're staked for the maximum amount of time with a certain amount of tokens. And then you're like, all right, yeah. come on in VIP. And then you get to yeah. like talk to the speakers after. That would be pretty cool. That would be dope. You, you just know skip what? the line. You know yeah. what? I'll put that, uh, Alex, I'll put that in the uh, in the white paper. Why not? <laughs> that, that would be cool, honestly. And, and it would make people feel, you know, important like VIPs and they get real VIP uh, treatment. And I love the fact that it's it's only going to be 6 million market cap. You guys are now launching like 50 million, 100 million market cap, which gives the token room to grow, which I think is very important. Like, I think we need more SNS projects that launched at relatively low market caps so that, you know, we get those huge increases and more eyes are going to come to uh, on ICP because we see what's happening on, on Solana with all those tokens that go 10x, 50x. Yeah. Uh, people people notice the the chain, and we need more of that on ICP. And, so, and it and, it, and, and, and in alignment with that, it's not um, the, the DAO is not funding a core team, existing core team's operation. It's having a budget, and the way it works is the DAO would say, "Hey, I want to spend four hundred thousand dollars on a three day event in Portugal for a thousand people, or whatever it's going to be," and uh, that's a contract that it can hire a vendor for, like Code State to mm -hmm. organize and the, and the vendor just gets the flat payment and they organize it. They, they take a contract just like any normal contractor. Um, but, uh, but, the, but it's the DAO making that decision. It's the DAO funding the events and there is no like ongoing core team. So uh, yeah, with this raise, we wanted to do um, a, a lot of special things. I think we're going to have a very high percentage of the, of the token uh, tokenomics go to the swap sale because it just makes sense for what this is. Mm -hmm. And um and yeah, I think, I think that people will be we're pretty pleased with how the tokenomics are structured because we, we, we wanted something that was um, like, like, like truly like, 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 
uh, designed for the community. I mean, this needs to be a community thing from day one. For the people that are interested to participate in this decentralization swap or to get their hands on the Conf tokens, what are the next steps? All right. Well, one of the coolest things is that um, we're uh, we're gonna we're planning an airdrop allocation, meaning um, we would get a list of principles, and once the DAO is fully formed, it can pass a proposal to to airdrop uh, all all of the principles in place. And so, what we want to do is. Anybody who attends an in-person meetup watch party for ICPCC on May 10th will be added to the airdrop allocation. They'll get an airdrop allocation. And uh, anybody who organizes one of those meetups will get a slightly larger airdrop allocation. So find a meetup near you. If there isn't one, consider applying to, to, to organize a meetup. And um, because this is truly a decentralized event, even in how the meetups are done all, all over the world by different parties, anybody who wants to be part of it. And, uh, and, and yeah, you know, for more updates about this, you know, be sure to follow us at ICP underscore CC. Um, the, the event will be posting updates about the DAO tokenomics and other things as they become known. But yeah, I mean, and then on May 10th, tune in and um, I mean, the, the, the sales should be live so you can you can participate and, and, uh, and join in shaping the future of ICP and really just like what Web3 events can look like moving forward. Listen, people will have to stay and watch the event happening to be able to get all those airdrops. Again, I really love the fact that you guys are airdropping tokens to people that are uh, going to the meetups. Now, I definitely need to make sure that I will go and I will attend one of the meetups. I was thinking either Berlin, I was talking to a friend of mine and he wants to go to Berlin. But if if we don't want to go as far, there is one here in, in Romania, which I think is super nice. Where can people find you? At what event? And then how can they get in touch with you online? I'm going to be hosting the, the meetup in Austin, Texas. Um, and uh, and so that's why I'll be on May 10th. And you can also find me at, at I, uh, Isaac, I-S-A-A-C. Um, and I think it's underscore ICP, <laughs> Isaac, ICP. Are you guys still accepting projects that, you know, want to want to participate in this event? Is it too late now to participate in ICPCC? Projects and influencers, are you still accepting them? We are for the next couple of weeks, but it's getting pretty tight because we're only a few weeks away from the event. So uh, really, if, if, if anybody's interested out there, uh, reach out to us very, very soon. You can DM us on uh, the main event at ICP underscore CC on, um, on Twitter. And, uh, and we're trying to be as inclusive as possible. So like one of the main offers that's available to anybody, any projects in the IC is if you want a, uh, like, a like a one minute spotlight video, um, uh, you have a recording session with us and then we have an editor who will add music and add your screenshots uh, of, uh, of your DAP on top of it into a nice little promo video. So we wanna do that for as many projects as possible so that we can really show off all the cool stuff that people are building on the IC. Yeah, and I actually saw a few of those actually and they look great. So great job with that. And if, if there's any project that wants to participate in ICPCC 2024, get in touch with Isaac here and uh, he'll hook you guys up. Do you have some numbers that people can expect? Like how many viewers do you guys expect the, the onboarding event will have? How many attendees will be around the world uh, attending those in-person events? Do you have any numbers for us? Yeah, yeah, a few. I mean, we just hit over 500 registered people on our main event, Eventbrite, for the live stream. Um, one of the meetups in Kampala, uh, has over 200 people RSV, RSVP to it, which is really cool. Um, we're we're on track, and we're thinking we're going to have easily uh, over 2,000 people meeting in person and across all those meetups uh, globally, worldwide, and, and definitely many thousands um, watching us live on the on the on the live stream digitally. Super exciting! And where can people get their free ticket to participate in the onboarding event? The link will be for Eventbrite, so you can go to icp-cc.com and uh, you know. Maybe you'll put a lower third somewhere around here. <laughs> if you're working on May 10th, I recommend you take a day off and you participate in ICPCC 2024. There's going to be a lot of influencers, or a lot of projects featured, a lot of giveaways, and you really don't want to miss this event. Do you have anything to add before we go? Yeah, you know, the ICPCC for just people in the, the broader Web3 industry who aren't familiar with what ICP is, this is that's a learning event. But for existing ICP community members, like a lot of those who might be listening, this is really a call to action. Um, this is our this is our chance to, to come together and to show the rest of Web3 what ICP has to offer. And so I think that, um, you know, it's time for us to take a really inclusive tone and, just, and, and uh, not be talking about which chain is better or worse, but just be talking about how ICP makes all chains stronger. And it's time for us to... Um, to share, uh, we're going to have uh, dozens and dozens of videos meant for onboarding, meant for showcasing that are going to be independently shareable links uh, coming out of this. And we also have uh, icpguide.com, 
Um, so you have no excuse not to be able to have a way to, to share and onboard with your friends uh, what ICP is and why it's going to change the world. Um, and, you know, in, in the past, I know there's been complaints about marketing on ICP, but now we have a chance to, to get active and to, to push the future of marketing in ICP and really in Web3 forward in this new format with ICP CC DAO. Um, so this bull market, I think it belongs to ICP and it's going to happen because all of us are going to come together in a way that Web3 has never seen before. I agree. And right now, everybody's starting to become bullish on the Internet Computer Protocol. More and more people are hearing about what's happening with ICP. And I think this, like the price movement, honestly, came at the perfect time uh, preceding ICPCC. And I think a lot of eyes will be pointed at this conference and at ICP in general. So I'm definitely looking forward to see how the community will receive the conference. And I think that we have one of the best communities in crypto. I, I haven't seen anybody be so ruthless uh, for ICP as you know our community. So whenever somebody says something bad about ICP, everybody comes comes and uh, you know <laughs> defends it, which which I love. Looking forward to see you on May 10th, at least online, if if not live. Whenever you guys have anything to share about the conference, let me know. I'll help you guys with that. And I hope we will meet again before May 10th, just to share the latest news about the conference. Thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for everything, Alex. Bye. I hope you found this video interesting. And remember, there is only a little bit over one month until the community conference happens. Make sure if you haven't already registered, get your free ticket on Eventbrite. The links are going to be in the description below. And with that, we're done. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.